I've always enjoyed experimenting with different ways that we can present our pictures and a technique I used oh, a good few years ago now was a reflection style and I thought it's about time we brought it up to date. Right, we're going to make a start by coming over to the layers panel. We're going to duplicate the background layer and to do that I'm going to use Command J or Control J, that's Command J or Control J. There it is, we've now got layer one. Now, I always find it handy if you rename the layers as we go along. You can do that. I've just double clicked over that text of layer one. And I'm gonna change it to image because this is gonna be the main part of our reflection style frame. It is the image itself. Now we need to reduce the image layer in size. To do that, we're gonna to go to image. We're gonna to go to transform. We're going to go to free transform. While we're here, just take a look at the menu options that we've got. Okay, we're going to come back up to free transform. The transform tool has now been applied. Bring your cursor inside. You'll notice the way it changes to a black arrowhead. Now, if you right click, now look at the menu options you've got. There's a lot more here. We're going to go to scale. So we're changing from free transform to scale. I'm going to bring my cursor to the top corner. I'm going to click down. Because we've got scale, it's maintaining all of the correct proportions. Going to take it to that size there, just clicking down, lifting it up, perhaps making it a little bit smaller, down into that area, moving it back up again. That'll do nicely. I'm going to double click to apply the transform tool. There it is. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put a stroke border around the outside of our image layer. Now to do that, we're going to come over to the layers panel. I'm going to come over to the thumbnail and I'm going to press and hold down command or control. As you press and hold down command or control, look at the way your cursor changes, gets a square on the back. That's going to tell us that we can make a selection when you click down. So clicking down, there's the selection. Now we've got that, we can come up to edit. We can come down to stroke outline selection. That sounds about right. So that'll do nicely. We're going to click on it. And there's our stroke dialog box. Now the width, this will depend on the file size that you are using. The document that I've got here is quite a large one. It's 34.6 uh, megabytes in size. So I need to take this up in size. I'm going to bring my cursor over the text area of width and I'm going to take it up to, let's go for 16 pixels. If it's smaller, you can just back it up a little bit. So you know, experiment with the, the size on this. Where was I going? I was going to 16 pixels. There you go. Right, the color. I don't want black, so we're going to click in the window and we can now select the color. I'm not going to go for a brilliant white either. That's going to be too eye-catching. So instead, I'm just going to drop it down a notch or two. That would be pretty good. I'm going to click OK to that. Right, the next important thing is location. Make sure that you set this to inside. Inside is going to be inside this selection. It's going to give nice crisp corners to our stroke border. I'm going to click on OK. There it is, looking pretty good. Using Command D or Control D, that's Command D, Control D, which is Select, Deselect. Right, there's the story so far. Let's take a look at the background. We're going to come over to the background layer. I'm going to click on this, so this is now the live layer. We're going to go up to this little half black, half white icon, which is the create new fill or adjustment layer. And when we click on this, we get a drop down menu. It's the gradient. That's the one we're going to be using. Right. So at the moment, it looks a bit like a, a foggy day. So I'm going to bring my cursor over the window here. As we click down, this opens up the gradient editor. We're going to change it to black to white, but we're going to make further changes. I'm going to come down to this little black stop here. This is the color stop when you click on it. The color now comes into play. I'm going to click on this, which brings up the select stop color. Bring in your cursor out. You'll notice the way it's become a little eyedropper tool. I'm going to select a dark color blue from the jumper here. There, that'll do nicely. We're going to click OK to that. Right, we're now going to come to the midpoint, this little diamond. Make sure you've got that midpoint there. Do not click where it says click to add stop. So make sure you get that color midpoint. Clicking on this, the location, 50%. Bring your cursor over the text, move it in this direction. You'll notice the way that the darker tones are spreading up to the top. Moving it back in this direction, we're now reducing it down. I'm going to take it so it comes into that area there, would do nicely. Right, uh, once again, these whites are just a little bit bright. I don't want them to be, to be too overpowering, so I'm just going to click on that. There's our color stop now. 
just going to reduce it down a little bit into that area and we're going to click OK. Click in OK again and click in OK one more time. There it is. There's our background. Right, we need to make our reflection. So I'm going to come up, we're going to click on the image layer. This is now our live layer. We're now going to duplicate this layer. So using Command J, Control J, that's Command J, Control J. We've now got image one copy, but as we've done before, we're going to rename this by just double clicking on the text. I'm going to call this what it's going to become, which is the reflection. Right, now with the reflection, we need to turn it upside down. So we're going to go to image, we're going to go to rotate, we're going to go to flip layer vertically. And there it is, it is now vertical. Pick up the move tool from the toolbox, bring it back over. We're going to press and hold down shift on the keyboard, clicking down, moving it down. Why am I holding down shift on the keyboard? Because you're holding down shift, you can go up or down, but it's very difficult to go from left or right. So this is ensuring we keep it on the vertical line there. So it's going to match up perfectly, going to bring it down. You'll notice the way it seems to click into position. That will do nicely there. What you need to do is uh, highlight the two layers so they're both alive. So bring your cursor over the image layer, press and hold down Command or Control. Now click down, both are highlighted. Bring your cursor back over. I'm just going to lift this up to give a little bit more space. In fact, I'm going to shrink it down in size. So back up to Image, Transform, Free Transform. This time it's gone round the two images, our image and our reflection. Right click in one more time. I'm going to go to Scale. And I'm just going to uh, reduce it down a little bit in size like that, just lifting it up. I just want to see a little bit more. That will do perfectly like that. Double click into apply. Job nearly done. Right, let's take a look at this reflection. Click in, highlight in the reflection layer. The first thing we need to do is just to reduce it down a little bit. So we're going to put in a layer mask to do that. Now with the layer mask, we're going to be using the gradient tool. So clicking on the gradient tool, we're going to go down to tool options. Make sure you've got the linear gradient. That's this one here in the window. Just make sure that you've got the uh, the black to the white there. That will do nicely like that. We're going to click OK and job done. Apart from the opacity, just spotted that. Make sure you've got 100 percent. Right. Bring your cursor around this area here. Press and hold down shift. Why am I holding down shift? Well, as we saw with the move tool, it keeps things nice and vertical. So rather than having a wonky line, as soon as you press shift, it comes nice and vertical. I'm going to lift it up into this sort of area here, releasing it there, perhaps just a little bit more. So just repeating that, taking it a little bit further up this time into that position. Great stuff. That will do nicely like that. Right now at the moment, we've got a light blue frame around our mask here. This is showing that we've worked on the mask. We now need to work on the image. So click down over on this area. Notice the way that framework has now moved from the mask to the layer itself, showing us we're now going to work on the image. We're going to go to filter. We're going to come down to blur. We're going to go to Gaussian blur. And with Gaussian blur, we're going to blur it. Let's just bring it out so you can see there it is. That's the before. That's the after. This is 9.4, which looks pretty good. Let's try a little bit more into that position. 9, 10.9 even. Click OK to that. Great stuff. Right. Next, we're just going to reduce down the opacity. So clicking on the opacity slider, I'm going to reduce it down into that position. And there it is. There's our reflection. Right, the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to give it a little bit of perspective with it. So once again, we're going to highlight the two layers. So bringing my cursor over the image layer, pressing down Command or Control, now clicking down. So both are highlighted. Back up to Image, Transform, Free Transform, Command T, Control T. That's the shortcut, which is a great way of working. So go into Command T, Control T for the Transform tool. Bring your cursor inside again, this time going for perspective. And with perspective, I'm going to click down. You'll notice the way it's dropping that grab handle down. The bottom grab handle will be coming up, by the way, as we change the perspective as it's taking it into that area. Right clicking again, going to free transform. Just going to come to the grab handle there, going to move it in just to keep the scaling looking right. Double click into apply. There it is nearly finished. One more thing I'd like to do is just give a little bit more space to the top. I'm also going to move them over. So I'm going to pick up the move tool, just going to reposition into this, that area that would do nicely. 
we're going to pick up the crop tool now with the crop tool selected I'm going to click we're going to drag it over the image now don't forget there's a lot of this reflection hanging down over the edge in fact just keep an eye on the size here it is 95 megabytes in layers right watch the way this is going to drop down a little bit we're going to lift it up so i'm going to take it up into that area there just going to give a little bit more space to the top i'm going to bring it in a touch on the side as well into that area now that we've done that i'm just going to double click inside the frame you'll notice the way that that shrunk down from what did i say it was 95 i think it's now 81 looking pretty good like that now what you can do is bring your cursor over the little see these little links here these little grayed out links click on them bit of a Midas touch is going to happen they now turn to gold that means that the layers are now linked so if I pick up the move tool it doesn't matter which layer I click on they are now linked together so you can move them both around next thing I'm going to do is just give a little bit more definition and this is going to be the finishing touch a little bit more definition to our image layer so we're going to come down to the effects icon with the effects icon navigate your way to styles bit of a clue there and from a drop down menu a bit more of a clue we're going to go to drop shadows double clicking on high and that's going to give us a good start position we're going to come back over to layers now with layers you'll notice there's a little fx icon here it indicates the layer style has been applied double click will open the style settings on drop shadow this is where we can make changes because if you bring your cursor out over the image you've now got the move tool I'm going to move it into a position like that would be pretty good I'm going to reduce the size down now the size you can see if the further i bring it out the more it tends to feather it for want of a better words if you bring it right in it gets a very sharp crisp one i'm going to take it to uh, that position there we got to 62 right the distance going to give it a little bit more distance you notice the way it's moving out i'm going to just you know, back it up into there it will do nicely and the opacity i'm going to drop the opacity right down as well i just wanted to give a little bit of uh, definition as i've said between the image and the background just dropping it down further there i'm just going to change the position just lifting it so where it can be a little bit there that's all I'm after that will do nicely if I just switch it on and off you can see there's the before there's the after it's just that little touch to give that definition clicking OK to it there is our finished image I'm going to right click on the desktop and I'm going to change it to black always a good way to look at your pictures and even better way is to press tab on the keyboard that removes all those distracting panels now using command 0 control 0 to open it to fit on screen go on give it a try hope you've enjoyed the video please like and subscribe but until the next time it is happy imaging and take care